Yan Liang joins me now from Portland in the U.S. state of Oregon. She's an economics professor at Willamette University. Good to see you again, Professor. Good to talk to you, Aline. Well, what are the current job market prospects for college graduates versus vocational school graduates? Tell us more about the greatest needs and the greatest demand in China. Right. So if we look at the big picture, um, the job markets are doing pretty well in China. Um, the, the, the new jobs creation this year so far in the first three quarters, I would say, um, has reached, you know, uh, 10.45 million, which is 95 percent of the government's target. The unemployment rate remained about 5.2 percent, which is also better than the government target of 5.5 percent. Uh, what this means is that the job markets are doing well. So um, with about 9.09 .09 million college graduates um, in the market this year, so I think what that says is that many of the college graduates are able to find the jobs, and I think all these vocational trainer, uh, training students, as your reporter talked about, they're highly demanded um, to you know promote the kind of skill upgrading in China's manufacturing industry. So I think for both groups, their job prospects are um, pretty good, um, given that this is a pandemic year. That said, the youth unemployment rate still stood pretty high in China, and there are also very interesting changes in job preferences. For instance, there are more college graduates who wanted to work for the public jobs or um, state or enterprises, and um, so there are some interesting trends. Well, with this increase in vocational training, uh, is it providing more opportunities for students and employers? What areas, vocational areas, are seeing the most growth? Yeah, absolutely. I think as China is transitioning to the uh, smart manufacturing and, and promote, you know, skill upgrading in the manufacturing sector, there is very um, increasing sort of there is a large increase in the demand for these highly skilled professionals. As the reporter talked about, you know, China has only about 200 million skilled workers and um, only about 58 million they are considered as highly skilled. So, for instance, you know, when China is moving towards the new energy vehicles, there's a huge demand for, you know, um, electric engineers, the uh, technicians and, um, you know, environmental engineers. And so all of these, I think, create a huge demand for um, these highly skilled professionals. And we know that 2025 is coming up fast. As we heard, China is trying to create a modern vocational educational system. People have to teach these increased offerings. So how is that demand being met? Right. So that's a great question. I think, you know, these um, trainings is always tiered, right? Right now, China has already 2,400 plus technical schools. They are having, you know, almost 4, 4 million students enrolled in them. So these will be the next tiers of, you know, um, school professionals that work for enterprises or can become trainers themselves. So I think, you know, it's a system that is growing. And um, so the government now is taking measures. For example, last year, um, they have passed an action plan trying to improve the quality and quantity of these vocational training schools. And the goal is by 2025, um, they will be able to provide about 20 million um, training sections to employers and some of the employment groups. Um, and they expect to um, produce about 2 million highly skilled professionals professionals every year. So this is a long-term plan, um, but, you know, the actions have been taking uh, place. So um, I think that is a realistic goal. And Professor, we're almost out of time, but I got to ask you about the stero stereotypes, especially the financial ones. What more needs to be done to help parents, family members, and society overall, and how they view vocational schools and blue-collar jobs more favorably? I mean, this is something we see everywhere. Right. I think with the rising demand, um, I think it will be natural, right, for these um, skilled professionals to be able to earn higher pay. Um, the government can definitely play a role, for example, improving the benefits of these students that are in the training schools, like providing better internship opportunities or coordinating with businesses um, to provide more you know, job opportunities and hands-on experiences. Um, and I think over time, these kind of stereotypes will be uh, dwindled um, because of the improvements in the, the sort of these students' um, um, job pros prospects. Yeah, more money, more salary. Professor Yan Liang, always great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.